How can the Auburn Tigers beat the Georgia Bulldogs? We tell you on today's Locked On Auburn. Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining us as he does every Wednesday, it's a little War Report Wednesday action with Mike G of Mm -hmm. the War Report. If Auburn's going to beat Georgia on Saturday to pull off the upset of the year so far, they've got to do two things. Mike G, they've yep. got to do two things. The first is they've got to run the football. And look, Georgia's not allowing a whole lot of yards on the ground. I think it's like 75 yards a game. It's not yep. a lot. It's not a lot. One of the best in all of college football. But I want Auburn to come out and try because it almost seemed like they were told that they couldn't run the ball in A&M, and then they believed it. And then when mm. they started running the ball in A&M, they were able to. And then they kind of went away from it towards the end when the game became kind of out of reach because you had to pass the ball. I want to see them come out and try to establish the run early. That's that's what I think the first uh, the first kind of offensive attack needs to be. Uh, yeah, I'm going to disagree with you. Okay. I'm going to disagree with you on this one. I think that Georgia is going to be prepared for that. Um, I think that uh, similarly to AM, what Auburn has put on tape is is that you sell out to stop the run until they prove they can do anything through the air. Sure. So, you know, in my mind, I, what I thought they were going to do going into Texas A&M was try to establish some rhythm with Peyton Thorne's arm early in that game, uh, get some quick passes, loosen them up, and then make room for your running backs uh, after they start to back off the line a little bit. Um, they did not do that. Uh, it, it, it looked a little disjointed, but this week, if Peyton Thorne is your starter ag- against this team, mm-hmm. I think that you have to establish his arm early in this game, especially if you're going to get out to a fast start. Get some passes down the field. Get these wide receivers, Zach, engaged and participating in this offense and move the ball through the air on this Georgia defense if you can. Um, and you know, once they respect it a little bit, you, 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 your your offense opens up. But right now, I, I, I think it's the passing game that's going to be the key for Auburn in this one. Yeah, I just think the rushing attack is more achievable because I don't believe in this passing attack anymore until I see it. Until I see it. And also, I think Auburn's going to need to make this game as short as possible. Allow mm-hmm. the Georgia offense to run as few plays as possible, keep that defense fresh so they don't get as worn down like they did against Texas A&M. Because what have we seen Georgia do all year? The the second thing, you already said it. Start fast. You've got to punch Georgia in the mouth early, send the message you're not afraid of them, and also send the message to your team yourself if you're Auburn, we can score. (laughs) We do know how to score, and this offense is better than the product that they've put on the field against Texas A&M. And Cal, because until they do it against the formidable team, it's not better than the product that they put on the field against Cal and Texas A&M. They've got to prove everybody wrong, and that's what that's what this stage is set for, right? If they want to go out and do it, and I think if you could start the game with a long drive with several Jarquez Hunter runs, Jeremiah Cobb runs, Ryan Batty runs, some quick passes that are predetermined to Shane Hooks and Jay Fair and I'd love to see Jair Shorter involved in the offense. Definitely need mm. more Rivaldo Fairweather. No question about it. And have a long drive. Take off five, six minutes of the first chunk of the game. Get seven points. Because we've seen this Georgia offense start slow. If you're this team, you're looking at you're falling asleep watching that South Carolina tape where they had a big lead at halftime. The difference between, I think, this Auburn team and that South Carolina team is I think this Auburn defense could hold on to a two or a three point. A two or a three score lead, unlike South Carolina's defense. The issue is they got to get to that point, Mike G. And, and I think they could do it by having these long sustained drives, shortening the game, and a big way to do that's by running the football. Yeah, look, uh, you made you made a good point about Georgia and how they've started the game. They've scored a total of two touchdowns in four first quarters so far this year. Um, they're scoreless in one of those. Uh, they kicked a field goal in another. 
They I have, think it's 17 first half first points quarter all points. year. First, first quarter points, yeah. Okay. Uh, so they, they they scored seven in two games, uh, three in one, and zero in, in, in one. So okay. th- they have not, 17 first quarter points. Got yeah, it. they have not started fast at all. Uh, they've had pretty sluggish first halves. And if you're going to get out to a quick start versus this team, I think you. I, th- I just think you got to move the ball through the air. Uh, the clock rules definitely are shortening the game. Certainly, um, mm-hmm. you, you've got to get your receivers involved early in this one because you may need them down the stretch. And what we've seen with Auburn is we've seen receivers disengage because of lack of rhythm with with the passing game. Uh, yeah. look, at, look at Saturday. Uh, you know, on Robbie's first throw, shorter stopped running. He stopped running. The safety bit down. And Robbie actually threw the ball to where it was supposed to be. Uh, Freeze kind of confirmed it in his Monday presser that he threw some balls where the receiver ran the wrong route. <laughs> and, and and he it's didn't ridiculous. think he was, yeah, he didn't think that he was getting the ball, so he stopped, but the correct throw was made. Every fan overreacted and said, Look, he can't throw either. There was an overthrow. No, that receiver wasn't where he was supposed to be. Yeah, uh, then the deep, the deep pass to to hooks in the end zone, too. I thought that was a great throw by Robbie. It, it, yeah, it, listen, I I disagree on whether it was a great throw. I think it was a good enough throw, but but your receiver has to go up and make that play. He's got to make that play for you. Uh, uh, Javaris Johnson to the outside, you know, for what I've heard from players, that's a play that he normally makes. He makes that play. You got to go up and catch that. I think you get these receivers involved early and establish a rhythm with them because at the end of the game, if you're going to have a chance, it's not going to be running the ball down the field. I, I think Auburn can do that, Zach. But what they can't do, what you can't do, you know, to be great on offense, you have to be exceptional at one thing, truly Mm -hmm. exceptional. Like, you know, we're doing it, but you can't stop us anyway. Or you've got to have balance so that people understand, don't know what's coming. Auburn has neither right now. Mm. So I think they have a better chance of establish trying to establish balance by getting the passing game going and and by as a byproduct the run game works a little better because they can keep Georgia off balance than trying to run the ball down Georgia's throats I I, I don't think that Georgia's going to let them do that yeah talking to Georgia folks I think the biggest concern and you got to be careful when you talk about concerns about this Georgia team because they're all good so I guess the position they feel least good about is the linebackers and so mm. how do you take advantage of, of linebackers if if Auburn and this coaching staff deem the linebackers as a weakness of this defense? And, you know, this coaching staff's game plan may be different than, you know, what Georgia, people who cover the Georgia teams may be. But when you look at it, you, you attack them with, you know, crossing patterns and make these linebackers kind of understand the space around them. And I think that'd be a great way to get Jay Fair and Rivaldo Fairweather involved, mm-hmm. Javaris Johnson involved. And you run at them. You know, you make them, you make them get off blocks and, and tackle Jarquez Hunter and Brian Batty, and I think both of those guys are difficult to tackle for different reasons. And I, I just think you put pressure on them, and, and I think, I think that's what we're going to see. That's my guess, Mike G. Mm-hmm. Will it be successful or not? We'll have to wait till Saturday. Absolutely, yeah. I, I I expect them to pivot somewhat from what we've seen the first four games. You um, have to, yeah. right? Like you and- have to. Uh, you know, hear me out on this one, Zach. I, I, I think too much of the offensive game planning has been centered around trying to establish Peyton Thorne as QB1. Uh, and now, it, it, to to the detriment of your offense, mm. right? Um, you, they've tried, they tried to get him settled in. Like, they gave him a ton of throws versus Sanford. Um, and then they tried to do something I didn't understand with him you know, against Texas A&M, if he's your QB one and, and, and Hugh Freeze kind of, in, you know, hinted, we're leaning towards, we'll start the game and then try to get Robbie his touches. You need a game plan that makes sense for what he does well. And to me that you brought him in because of his arm and his accuracy and his knowledge of the game. He was supposed to raise the floor in this QB room. So you got to let him do that. And if he fails at it, he fails at it, but you at least have to let him attempt it. In my in my uh, Jay Fair and and and, and Javaris Johnson had a combined four targets on Saturday. You've described them as your best players. I I don't think they did enough to try to establish his arm. And then when they needed it, it was in third and long. And and you know at that point, expecting him to be in a rhythm maybe is unreasonable. I don't know. I know yeah. he's an experienced guy, but you know at this point, he's either established or he's not. Mm-hmm. And if he's not, then obviously you move on uh, and see if somebody else can get the job done there for you. Yeah, I, I think it's at that point. I uh, I agree with that. I agree with that. So 
can you fix the offense at this point of the season? We discuss in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at DoorDash. My family uses DoorDash all the time, all the time. Their dashers are top notch. My wife actually had dinner delivered last night for her and my daughter, and they loved it. It was still warm when they got there. I'm trying to eat a little healthier, so I didn't do that, but it was great. I was very jealous watching the meat, the delicious decadent food. Um, so if you're missing anything as far as groceries as well, they can do a grocery pickup for you, bring it right to your home. We're all busy, or you get home and you're tired, or it's Saturday morning and you're trying to make breakfast and like, dang it, I don't have any syrup. You can order it all on DoorDash. So check it out. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order. Uh, up to a $20 value when you use code locked on college at checkout. Limited time offer terms apply. That's 50% off up to $20. No minimum subtotal and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code locked on college. Mike G, our guest on this War Rapport Wednesday. Can Auburn fix the offense? I think a lot of it has to do with quarterback play. It sounds like you do too, the, the way we ended that last that last segment. How do you fix it, Mike G? Can you? Does something just click in Peyton Thorne's noggin? Do they use him differently? Do they go back to rotating Peyton and Robbie? In your mind, how do you fix this? Uh, not to sound like a broken record, but I think you fix this by establishing some semblance of a passing game. You have to. They've got to be able to move the ball through the air. Yeah. Now that's who that's who Hugh Freeze has been. That's who he's been. He's 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 produced eight hundred yard receivers on the regular. I mean, on average, right. and uh, uh, you've got to move. If you're one dimensional, when you go against teams like Georgia, they're going to eat you alive. They're going to take the one thing you think you do well if you can't do anything else well, and they're going to severely limit it because right. they have the horses to do that. So if you want to fix this offense, you have to fix the passing game, period. Now, the play calling has been curious, right? Hugh Free said Monday in the presser that it's something that he's actually been struggling with. And what that means, that says to me, is that there may be a little bit of an internal – I don't want to call it a battle. That may be too strong of a word, but you know, there's definitely some. Uh, I mean, I hated that. I hated that on my show yesterday. Yeah, it's like, it doesn't seem like they're fully on the same page. Aligned. They're not aligned. Right. Yeah, it seems mm -hmm. like they're all aligned on what they're trying. We're, to do we're talking about Hugh Freeze and Philip Montgomery. And, and Philip Montgomery, correct? Right. Yeah. So uh, those guys have to get on the same page. Uh, ultimately, it, this is Hugh Freeze's team. So I would think that if. You're deferring anybody, you defer to the head coach in terms of what the vision on offense is supposed to be. But yeah. you fix it first and foremost by putting in a scheme and a game plan that works for your personnel and that works against your opponent. Uh, because you can have great players, uh, sure, but if you've got a bad game plan going in, you can you're you'll lose you're gonna lose games. Period. Right. Uh so uh, I think they fix it. They fit you fix it with scheme. Your talent is what it is. Right. Hugh Free said, oh, we're getting ready to play a string of teams that, that, that have recruited at a high level. I, I, you know, that while that's true, I don't love that message in season. I mean, it, to me, it says you're, you're saying you don't have good enough players to beat the teams that you're playing. Right. I think Auburn has good enough team players, if combined with a great game plan, to give everybody on this schedule a run. Yeah. I, I get why you don't like that message in season, but I think one, he's recruiting when he says sure. that. I think he's recruiting because everything this man does right now is about the betterment of acquiring talent for future Auburn rosters. Everything. Sure. Sure. Everything. That's why he's not calling plays, right? And so I think when he says that, I think that's strategic. And I think he's going to be able to kind of line up. And when he talks to these recruits, hey, we can't compete with these people right now because we don't have you. We need you on our team. Insert four or five star player name, right? And I think that's exactly what is happening. I think that's why so many recruits are going to come to this Auburn-Georgia game this Saturday, and Auburn's got the opportunity to make a statement. But also, I think Hugh Freeze is just really honest. I think he's setting expectations, and he talked about it at media days. like, yeah, I don't know if we're going to be that good. And it's like, we didn't believe him. We didn't believe him. And I think I said this going into the season that Auburn was going to lose four in a row to A&M, Georgia, LSU, and Ole Miss. Mm -hmm. I don't feel as – I may change my mind on LSU over the bye week. We okay. may change my mind on that, but we'll see. We'll talk about that later. But I think after that, 
the the super talented teams are out of the way. I, I think Auburn is just as, if not more talented than Arkansas, than Vanderbilt, than Mississippi State. And if you win those games, you go seven and five, which is what we all kind of expected anyway. Yeah. Um, here's what I'll say in, in, in response to the recruiting message. You know, yeah. while I do think, yes, you know, we, if this isn't working because we don't have you, I, I think that that is a good recruiting message. You know what else works is proof of concept, showing recruits that you're going to be able to do the things that you're telling them that you're going to be able to do. Like, so it can't be so far behind. It can't look dysfunctional, mm -hmm. right? You know, uh, there were a lot of fans that came at me and said, Mike G, Cam Coleman is flipping from Texas A&M to Auburn before the end of the season. I, I had been pretty adamant he would stick with Texas A&M. Uh, what did he see on Saturday that would encourage him to go from one to the other? You understand what I'm saying? Like, if, you, if you're looking at, at A&M, while I don't think they're world beaters, they definitely established an offensive mm -hmm. identity. And if you're a receiver, you can see yourself getting the ball in that system. Right sure. now, uh, I, I don't think that Hugh Freeze has that. So the, the message can't only be, you know, we don't have the guys and we need you. Yeah. It, it's, it's, he, got, it's got to show that concept on the field. Yeah. If he hadn't have been successful in the SEC prior, I'd buy it. I'd buy that a little bit more. So and, long and, and ago. We, yeah. And, and we talk about that next segment um, with Locked On Recruiting Insider Brian Smith. We'll talk about that more in just a second, Mike G. But as far as can it be fixed? Just yes or no. Can this Auburn offense be fixed at this point? 100% can be fixed. Yeah. I think it can be fixed, uh, but it just starts with the coaches, right? It starts with the coaches putting in a game. Once you have a clear direction on what you're trying to do, then you move on to execution, right? You 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 put in a plan, you execute that plan, and then the results should be good. Right, uh, right now, when you start with, if you're struggling over what to do, it's not a, it's not a wonder to me that execution doesn't look great right now. Mm -hmm. So they've got to establish that first. That's the first, that's the, you know, you can't put the car before the horse. The first yeah. step in this is establish a good plan, stick to it. And then once you have the buy-in, you, 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 you got to hold guys accountable for executing that plan. You know, if you, if you're Javaris Johnson or Shane hooks, go up and make a play for your quarterback. You know, uh, uh, if you're a uh, Robbie and, or, or, or Peyton Thorne at this point, make, Throw catchable balls for these guys. The miss to Jay Fair, right? It's bad. It was bad. You know, it was really bad. It was a throw that no matter what happened before that, you have to make that play. If you're a good, if you're a good quarterback, you got to make that play. You know, and, and and we don't know that Jay would have caught it or not. I think a lot of people assume he would have caught it, but even then, on that, uh, you, you, the receivers have to make the plays as well too. It just yep. seems like. No matter what end of it, it it is because of the disjointedness of the plan. It's I think it's spilling over into failed execution, and they just got fix one, and you can fix the other. I believe it's not too late to do that. It's not too late. Auburn doesn't is not zero chance against Georgia. Mm -hmm. It's not, but it, uh, similar to to you, how you feel about until I've seen it, <laughs> I'm I'm waiting. That's yeah. kind of how I feel about the offensive identity. Uh, but it doesn't mean that it can't be done. It can be done. They've just got to get it turned around quickly. And I think that even if they lose on Saturday, just like I said before, A&M, there are positives that can be taken and a loss. And I think that maybe this was a necessary – Saturday. last Saturday was a necessary step in, in, in terms of them taking steps forward yeah. to fixing the things that need to be fixed. Once it starts to cost you dubs, you know, the attitude changes. Mike G, how can people check out everything you've got going on, buddy? Uh, check us out at the War Report. We've got lots of great content coming for you guys. Basketball season is quickly approaching. It's almost here. It's almost here. So almost here. Uh, uh, besides having lots of great gridiron content, we're going to be on the hardwood as well, too, uh, following men's and women's basketball, so you don't want to miss that. Subscribe on YouTube. Become a patron. Absolutely worth your time for sure. Coming up, our conversation with Lockdown Recruiting Insider Brian Smith. But first, today's show is brought to you by our friends at Jace medical they have two different types of products one is called the jace case where you go online you buy the jace case and you get all these prescriptions these antibiotics sent directly to your door these life-saving medications so be sure to check that out that's at jacemedical.com they also have a product called jace daily so if you take a lot of uh you, if you take a medication daily and you're worried about any sort of 
emergency situation, whether it's supply chain or another pandemic or uh, bad weather, whatever it may be that could halt you getting these medications, they'll send you a year supply of them right to your door. So head over to our friends at jacemedical.com. Right now you get $20 off these life-saving antibiotics today uh, by going to Jace medical.com and using promo code locked on that's jace medical j-a-s-e medical.com let's talk a little recruiting with locked on recruiting insider brian smith and of course our coverage of recruiting throughout the locked on podcast network brought to you by our friends at linkedin jobs post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply brian the standout wide receiver nye Car the four star uh, was committed to Georgia for a hot minute, decommits from Georgia, and is visiting Auburn this weekend. It's a good sign, right? It's a good sign for the Auburn Tigers. I would think so. <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah, that's look. Auburn has always made a living off South and Central Georgia, and that's not going to change now under Hugh Freeze. And this kid's also at Colquitt County, one of the best programs in the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. He's a kid that I've seen play live. And Zach, I know you're an unbelievable athlete, and I'm sure you still run at least a four six. But I think sure. this kid has you. You know, um, I believe he's sub 10, 500 meter, like for real. Like this is not a normal kind of deal. He can fly, and with all the things that you freeze likes to do with RPOs and all that, you need mm -hmm. players like this to maximize your scheme and. I have a feeling that you's already looking on his cheat sheet, like, okay, how am I going to use this kid? Like all the fun things that coaches do in their office and their man cave, you freeze is having fun right now. Cause you can't do some of the stuff you really want to, unless you have a gadget guy like this, not the right. biggest kid. He's buck 50, buck 60, but he can fly. So Auburn getting him on campus, ironically for this particular game is uh rather noteworthy. And it looks like it's going to be Auburn or Miami. Yeah. The, the fact that, he was committed to Georgia and then he decommits and he's going to watch a game that Georgia's in makes you think he's really there for the other team. Right. I mean, that's, that's what you got to think. That's what you got. I, 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 mean, I, I mean, I was, you know, his age once and I, I did things that didn't make sense too, but I mean, I'm just kind of following, you know, the clues here and it seems like this is a big part of it. And also just from the Auburn perspective, this comes at a time where there's a lot of questions about what this Auburn offense is supposed to look like, what the identity is. And we've <laughs> talked about this before, but you've got to think if he is talking to Hugh Freeze or wide receivers coach Marcus Davis, hey, Nye, we need you. We need <laughs> you and Perry Thompson and Bryce Kane to help uh, revitalize this offense early in your playing career. Could you imagine them not saying that? That's how I would look at it. Like, right. look, I'm not trying to be mean, but you and I were texting during the game because I was watching Auburn play. And I'm like, this is painful. Like they were just yeah. shooting themselves in the foot, which first year, you know, coaching staffs and teams sometimes do. But yeah, they just don't have enough playmakers at the skill spots to play at the highest end of the SEC West. Well, they just don't. Right. And that's why a kid like this can change. Again. And he's also going to be a guy. Don't punt him the football. Do not oh. kick it to him short on a kickoff. These are the kinds of things that change games too. And I'm sure Auburn fans will celebrate any punt return for a touchdown. I will speak for them now. And uh, I'm sure you will be one of those fans cheering when that happens. But uh, Yeah, no, that'd be great. Special team touchdowns are a lot of fun. And punt returner is also a, a situation that, that Auburn is short right now. They don't have a, a full-fledged punt returner. So, you got to think that has something to do with the pitch. You know, I mean, even if you're not in the two deep in the, or the starter in the two, or you'd be in the two deep. You may not be a starter day one. Maybe he is. He's very good. <laughs> but surely he, he can contribute as a punt returner, worst case. So we'll certainly see. Let me ask you this. When players decommit, what's the purpose of decommitting versus just flipping down the road? That's a great debate, and it depends on who you ask. But I'm guessing that there's there was something that went wrong between him and or the Georgia staff, and I have okay. no idea what that is. So it was cut bait, and he probably had multiple schools he liked. Um, most kids still stay in contact with other schools just to make sure. 
Sounds like Nikar would be one of those. And I'm guessing that he wants to kind of figure it out. Maybe the Auburn visit will be enough. Maybe he, de- he decommitted at the right time and he just flips it around, you know, a short while later. I don't know. But this ought to be a pretty ramped up crowd on the planes. I, I would, I'd imagine it's going to be deafening. Yeah. So they need that because a train is coming through. So I, I hope they're at least hyped up. But uh, it, it's going to be interesting because he, if he doesn't commit soon after, I wonder if he's going to visit Miami. Like, how does this work for him? Because kids from his area don't usually go to Miami. But this is a very unique Miami staff in terms of how they recruit too. So I'm a little bit fascinated with it because Mario Cristobal recruits everywhere. It's not a traditional Miami staff. But uh, that is Auburn's back. They have to win those battles there more than Miami does. That's yeah. down the road. It's two and a half hours at the most from campus. Mm-hmm. You know, if that, so they, they have to win those kind of battles. Yeah. And you got to think Auburn quarterback commit Walker White is in his ear oh. time. He's been, he's become an ACE <laughs> recruiter. He was, I'm sure he was doing it before oh, yeah, then did. too, but uh, he's been, he's been outstanding for this class. So you've seen, you've seen Nikar play in person. Yes. Speed's the biggest thing that pops when you watch him in person. Uh, speed, like, he was a sophomore and I didn't know who he was. I was there to see a couple other kids. They were, they were playing a team from Atlanta. That's really good. And that team had several kids, one of which is playing corner now for Auburn as a freshman. Uh, you might like quite a bit, but anyway, I I'm watching the game. I'm like, who is this guy? He scored two touchdowns. Is that Kayan? Kayan Lee is who you're referring to. Yeah. yeah. I, I knew him really like everybody. We all knew that we was a dude. Like he got offered from every school in the country. Mm-hmm. So and Auburn to get him late was, I knew, a big coup. Huge I, I think he's, in a, it's, he's an NFL player. Agreed. But, like, they couldn't stop Nye, and these are kids that are older than he is. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. not a good sign because, you know, well, you got to deal with this kid for two more years, and he's continued to murder people. He just got kept getting better. He runs pretty good routes. But most importantly with him, unless you catch him flush, which is really hard, one-on-one, after he gets the ball, he is a nightmare. Yeah. He will make guys miss. Screen game, reverses, uh, jet sweeps, all the really generic stuff that it's become, he turns a two-yard gain into a 20-yard gain. It has nothing right. to do with coaching, just talent. So yeah. that's why he's special. Sure, sure. As far as uh, Auburn making the pitch, we've talked about this before, but it keeps coming up in YouTube comments and on social media. So I, I want to hear the folks. I want the folks to hear from you, the expert in recruiting. Auburn's offense struggling. Does it hurt recruiting in any way? I mean, somebody who wants to go somewhere and win a national title as a freshman, maybe, you know, maybe five or 10 players in the country, but they weren't getting Jeremiah Smith anyway. So like, not really because most kids, there's two things. They want to get to the NFL and they want to play early. Well, you can get to the NFL from Auburn and freeze has proved that he can put guys in the national. He, He had kids at Liberty that he was getting to the NFL. I mean, come on. He yeah, coach. Douglas is playing receiver and playing a lot for the New England Patriots right now at Liberty. There you go. Right. He's also proven when he was at Ole Miss and his scheme and his tendencies and his salary, mm-hmm. uh, honestly, will tell you that he can coach. And they just, they need playmakers. Yep. You and I didn't even watch a half and we're texting back and forth and we're like, this is painful. Like they just can't consistently move the ball. Yeah. And it's like, it was so close. I mean, it was so close. They just need, they need some pop. There's just no they pop. Need. And, and Nye, if they don't Nye have, have some pop. Right. Oh, absolutely. Right. And here's the fun thing. You put him out there with the two kids they have in-state committed, which guy do you focus on? It gets into that where coordinators have to pick. Perry's probably going to get the most double because he's so big. Yeah. But how many guys are going to stick with Nye in a one-on-one on an option route or an over route? He's just going to run away from guys. So did it you becomes see, a situation that makes. Did you see uh, Perry Thompson went to College Station to pull on uh, pull for the Tigers, and in that Texas did heat, it? he's wearing like a toboggan. I'm not. You can do that. You that, can do right? anything. If you can do that, you can uh, do anything. That's all I'm saying. Okay, good for him because he's better than me. That's he's all. Be- I'm I'll, I'll just say that now. So. Brian, how can people check out everything you've got going on, bud? Well, at FB Scout underscore Florida, um, this is my favorite week. For me, because this is recruiting week, a lot of teams are off this this week, and I'm doing some film study and having some fun. Uh, I know most Auburn fans probably hate Florida State, but I do run the uh, Locked On 
Seminole podcast. So if you want to check that out, Locked on Seminoles on Twitter. Um, actually, Zach and I will probably do a crossover in December about recruiting because that is going to become a major recruiting battle. And it's yeah. one that I grew up on. Yeah. Bowden against Bowden part of the time, literally. Uh, as <laughs> Auburn had a, a Bowden on their staff as the head coach. That was a lot of fun. But uh, sure. I think there are going to be a lot of recruiting across the border in the state of Florida for Auburn. So definitely going to be looking forward to that. Yeah, no, I think that'll be great. Absolutely. Thank you so much to Brian. Thank you so much to Mike G for hanging out on the show today. And we will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.